Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Tim Michael from TimMichaelArts.com and I'm looking forward to sharing another video with you. As you can see, today we're going to be working with the Wacom or Wacom in 205. And this is the medium size. There's a, there's a small, a medium, and a uh, large. I have my medium here and uh, I'll explain that why. I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, really excited to get you guys another video and especially you've gotten a lot of requests on how to draw on an Intuos board instead of a Cintiq board. It's an it's a very good question and so it's time to take a look at that. I'm also going to be using my keypad a lot throughout this video so you're going to be seeing a lot of back and forth between these two and you're going to see how important they uh, work together. Um, thanks a lot for being so patient with me to get out new videos. As you can see, um, the new podcast that I'm hosting with my friend Austin Thompson is now showing up here on my YouTube channel. So I hope that you guys enjoy that. It is an audio podcast that you can get on iTunes. You can also get it on uh, any RSS feeds. And you can just look up Artisan Central Podcast and it'll pop right up. We're really excited to have that new show really focusing. It's a variety show, so we talk about a lot of random stuff. But we also interview very interesting artists so a lot of people that you might recognize and we just got done doing an interview with Aaron Blaze and we're looking forward to having him on more often if you don't know who Aaron Blaze is he is the co-director of Brother Bear um, also has done a lot of characters for Disney so we look forward to having him so let's go ahead and talk about how to draw with a digital tablet if this is your first time okay now you might have gotten this and you might have thought it would be easy and then you sit down and you try it for the first time and you freak out, you wig out because you really have no idea what you've gotten yourself into and that's because you realize that you're not able to look at the board while you're drawing on the computer monitor in front of you now you guys are in a direct alignment with my screen so as you can see I'll hold my hands up on the sides of my screen roughly and that's about the sides of my screen right there so the first bit of advice I need to give you when you're starting to draw for the first time in a digital uh, board to the computer and you're not using like a tablet like an iPad or anything like that you want to make sure that your board is directly straightened with your screen you don't want it canted in any way uh, and, and you just want to keep it straight on okay that's the first bit of advice I would give you okay second advice I would give you is to remember very carefully uh, remember that the points here 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 and here on this board are the out outer corners of your computer monitor so as you are learning to draw and as you're focusing on drawing just understand that these four corners are the very edges of your computer monitor screen okay so that means that this board's going to kind of flex itself to fit within that area that you're drawing on on your screen so you might draw a line and it doesn't feel right and that's because you have to get used to the format that your screen is working with your board okay so if you see that the video here on this screen that's showing my tablet in real life um, is slower than the video um, that's playing right now as we record my screen I apologize it's just how Camtasia works as we do our recordings but it'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about okay so we have the board squared on we have my uh, my keyboard down here usually I'd have it in my lap most likely but I wanted you guys to be able to see it pretty well okay it's a, just a generic keyboard and generic mouse and I prefer a, a, a mouse with a scroll wheel I, I don't know it's just me and um, let's go ahead and get out get down to some basic ideas of how to draw with this and maybe we'll see if we can do a sketch uh, during our time here I apologize for the audio you might hear it get really well when I turn like this or really not so good when I turn away that's because the microphone is to the side of my face I'm getting it as close to me as possible but I'm a little nervous to bump it so I'm keeping it to the side of me so if the audio isn't great that's why okay let's go ahead and get started let me change this we don't need a document this large we'll go whoops we'll go 2000 by 1500 at 150 dpi okay <clears throat> and then uh, I want it in CMYK I'll do 8-bit and that'll work okay we'll hit okay and that's my screen that you will now see with the art okay now um, because of um, how big my screen is in comparison to the video recording that I'm doing I'm recording in 720p so that way it's easy to upload so you're only seeing a little bit of my Photoshop interface okay 
So I apologize that I'm not getting the whole thing in the shot and not showing you the buttons. Um, you can take a look at all my other videos. i got a ton of videos on YouTube teaching how to draw in Photoshop, okay? Just bump the microphone. Sorry about that if you heard that. Okay, I'm going to move it away from my face just a little bit so I can get to my board. Um, I am using a pen that I really appreciate because it actually has a very thick grip on it. You can buy separate grips on Wacom's site. Um, and you would install them onto the pen. It's really easy. Just unscrew the tip and you can slide on and off whatever um, whatever rubberized thing you want to have on here. So I like this thick one, which means that I've lost the ability to use the buttons on the set of the pen, but I'll be honest with you, I rarely use them anyway. And I like how thick it is. Easier to get a grip on for me because uh, my hands, I like to have something like that in my hand. And it's nice and rounded, so it makes it nice and easy. Okay, so let me go ahead and just grab my brush and I'll show you a couple tricks, okay? Um, when you're, whoops, looks like I got a pattern brush. Right here is one of the important reasons of having a keyboard. I'll explain all that in a second. Let me not use a pattern brush. Let me get something simplified. Hang on just a second here. Ah, uh, we'll do, do I have my brushes? I don't think I have any brushes saved on this computer. Uh, newer computer, replace current brushes. Yes, please. That's the sorted brushes. That's not going to do. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, round brushes with size. This will make a difference. Okay. Uh, let's do something like this. I think that'll work. Yeah. Okay. So I got pressure sensitivity going strong here. And um, let's go ahead and start with some of the basics of your board, okay? Your board, if you have the Intuos 5, uh, has a couple different key functions. Over here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 buttons. And each one of them has a preset that you can program in however you see fit. Also, there's a pinwheel, and that pinwheel can serve in zooming. It can serve in cycling through your layers. It can make your brush size bigger or smaller or it can rotate your canvas if you have um, your canvas stuff all updated and you're using an updated uh, version of Photoshop and an updated computer. Okay, so now let's talk about keeping a straight line. If you draw really slow and you're trying to draw lines really slow to get a real key focus, you'll notice that my hand is rubbing across the board it's not doing so well and it causes a streak across the paper that just does not look right let me do it again for you I'm trying to keep this line as straight as possible but you can see everywhere that there are these crazy peaks all over the place all through this thing that are showing that it's just it's reading every single possible move that you do and since Photoshop does not have a um, line cleaner if you will um, and it doesn't try to clean up your edges for you you're getting a very true realistic taste of how good your line quality is okay it's kinda lame and that's that's the stinky part of Photoshop I like that there are some programs like Manga Studio um, EX5 and uh, below that actually will correct your brush and help you keep straighter, cleaner lines. You know, it's not cheating. It actually helps you quite a bit, and um, I would strongly suggest it. But a lot of people like Photoshop, and I totally know why. Um, it's a great software to work in, especially if you're a concept artist or you like more of a painterly approach to your stuff. But let me show you how to get lines straighter, okay, and make them cleaner. One of the things that people try to do when they draw a picture is to focus on line line quality by going slow. So let me see if I can get a, a different brush just because I want to work in a different kind of flow. Okay, that's fine. So um, as you can see, if I make a, what I think is a circle, according to, if I make a perfect circle on my board, you can see that it actually makes more of an oval. And that's because, once again, these four points are trying to make, um, these four points are trying to make a balance with the computer screen. So that means it's turning it into more of an oval. I'm going to go back with Alt Control Z. You'll see how often I use this. It's crazy. Um, and what you need to do is you need to understand where on your screen you're clicking. Now one of the other things that I have going on is because I have more than one screen, my mouse will go all the way, since this is the side panel here, I will continue and then it goes all the way onto my other screen over here onto my Cintiq that's off the picture to this side. Okay, So what I need to do is I need to change my settings really quick. And that's really easy to do. I'm just going to go ahead and go into my settings 
and it brings up some properties. I'm going to go to my, actually I don't even need to do that, I'll just do a display toggle. Okay. So clicking on display toggle, oops, it's opening up my settings board which I don't need. So I'm just hitting my display toggle button that I have programmed in right here. And now, is it going to the sides? Yes. So you can't see it, but if I take my mouse all the way to this side, it goes to the very side of the screen and no further. If I go all the way to this side, it's doing the same thing. Now if I draw a circle, it should be pretty straightforward. Ah, much better. Okay. Now, you're not going to get complete control right off the bat. Okay, you're not going to be able to draw a perfect line right off the bat just because of how digital works. Like I said, if you try drawing a straight line, it doesn't do so well. So here's the trick. If you go from point A to point B, if you have to get across that, there's two ways you can go about this. One, you can try and make straight, fast moving lines, okay? Speed is very key in drawing digital. The faster that you can get across to your, your space, the better it's going to look. Now also, and I'm hitting alt control to Z, uh, disease, <laughs> alt control Z to back up. If you want to make this better, see there's a nice crisp line finally. If you want to make this better, what you can also do is you can go from point A to point B by hitting Z, zooming way out. Now with my brush again, I can make that same in a much smaller area which means that hopefully you can get across much quicker but as you can see with the quick stroke you're making rough strokes all over the place and you have to keep going and doing it again but if I zoom in that should look like a fairly crisp line and it definitely does now there's a couple other uh, options as well you can zoom in so if I have to get from point A to point B I can zoom in and I can as quickly as possible try to get across but because you're zoomed in you might have a little bit more control over the pen it's not going to be perfect though and I would strongly advise speed as your key element okay control alt Z to back up all this stuff let me go ahead and just start drawing something so you guys can kind of see how I roll um, you got your I'm, I'm not sure what to call these brackets and your square brackets I'm gonna call them square brackets that makes your brush bigger that makes your brush smaller okay so I'm gonna make my brush at about 15 pixels I don't even think about what size the pixels are anymore I just go with it so I'm gonna go ahead and just try and start drawing someone or something okay and as I do this <clears throat> you'll see I'm doing lots of scribbling and I'm also doing lots of quick movements alright and these quick movements are gonna help me make decisions on the final outcome um, right now because I'm scribbling I know that this is not going to be an important part of the drawing this is just my basic sketching phase okay I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and my brush is still the same size I really don't need it to be that size so I can make it ever so slightly smaller I can hit B to select my brush you waste an awful lot of time jumping over to your tool panel on the left side of the window uh, and making selections it's better if you're trying to get things done quickly it's better to use the functions built into your keyboard and either reprogram them or just learn them so if I need to if you need to you can go and highlight over one of those tools I can pull that panel over here and if you hold your mouse over it it'll tell you what the key is so B is to select my brush. Eraser is E. So if I hit E, it selects the eraser. And you'll learn the tools over time, you'll learn all those keys over time, and it's really a benefit to you if you do. I'm going to try and do something a bit more with this guy than I usually do. In all of my videos, I just quickly, you know, come up with whatever, but this time I'm going to try and come up with something a little bit more. See if I can come up with something interesting. All right, um so my first premise right now is just learning to understand where point A and point B is, okay? So 
anyone else who would be drawing at this point in time, if you're new to digital, you would not be able to probably get this right off the bat. Even though this might look very simple, just understanding how your pen is communicating with your screen is the first important thing. Now if I take this board and I twist it at an angle and I start drawing straight up and down, you'll see that everything becomes italicized. So if I draw a straight line up and down, it italicizes one way. Or if I turn the board the other way and I draw it again, straight up and down, it italicizes another way. So that's the reason why I'm telling you guys to face your board straight forward directly at the screen. So that way when you make a straight up and down line, you're really going straight up and down. Also, try and remember that you need to learn to work with your computer. You and your computer are partners in this task that you're trying to draw. Which means that you can't just tell that, you know, okay, I'm going to draw straight up and down and you have to do what I say. You have to watch what your hand is doing to the screen and you have to make a decision. So you might think that you're drawing straight up and down when you're drawing this line. Which you might be, or you might not, it depends. So what I do is I make my first line and I see that I'm a little italicized to one side. So I'll correct it with my hand to make it straight up and down on the screen. My screen is telling me what I'm doing wrong. I just need to listen to the screen and go with it. And that's the same thing as as I go along and I make my decisions while I'm drawing on the board. That's the key thing. All right, let's see what else I can do to this guy. I want to kind of mess him up a little bit, okay? So we're going to go ahead and give him some, maybe like a patch over his eye. And you'll see as I work along here, you'll see just my, my workflow. Usually with my Cintiq, I use another board. It's called a G11. I'd say look it up on Amazon. It's really cool. And it's a gamer board. It's made for left-handed gamers. Uh, or, or it's made so you can use your left hand better. It takes all the keys on this side of the keyboard and it implements them in a way that's easy for your hand to reach. And it even has a little joystick on the side and a couple buttons for your thumb. So that makes it really easy and quick for me to make selections. And I've programmed it to do those functions really well, you know. So that means as I'm drawing along and I'm trying to get things done quickly in a caricature, if I don't have my Cintiq with me, or even if I do have it, I use my Cintiq all the time for this, I want to make sure that um, I can make those functions quickly. And I can do that very quickly by, um, by using that board. Now, if I'm continually jumping to the side of the screen to keep selecting my tools and things and going up into my side panel up here, um, that you can't see in the corner over here to select my brushes and making adjustments to the brushes that way I am wasting like I said I'm wasting a ton of time so once again learning those key commands is the biggest thing you can do for yourself if you're just starting out okay I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy some wicked crazy cheekbones and I'm gonna follow this down into the chin holding down shift I can move around my screen by dragging okay and same with um um, same with a lot of the other functions. If you like using a certain color, the Alt key will become your best friend. If you like certain other functions like Undo, which Undo is a big deal, then you do Alt Control Z, or you can also program it into your one, one of your buttons up here on this panel. If you want to have the ability to work with your brush and make the brush bigger or smaller, you can select it with your pinwheel. What you're seeing the side of the pinwheel over here as I click, it gives up, brings up a little menu and then you can scroll with your finger to make it larger or scroll to make it smaller and I'm okay with that it's just when I have my keyboard in front of me or my G11 it's just easier for me to do what I choose um, this brush that I'm using right now is just a hard brush that is working off of opacity so the harder I push the harder line it's going to put down the lighter I push the lighter the line it's going to put down the one thing it isn't affecting is size so if I make my brush really big and I draw a line you'll see it stays that same size all the way through it doesn't change I like that because it simulates the idea of getting smaller if you do it light till it disappears it looks like it's getting smaller so I can simulate that or else I can go and I can find a brush that has that function but for my pre-sketching phase and for my painter phases I prefer just to stick with something like this okay let me go ahead and give him some different hard cheeks jawline structure on here. I think that'd be kind of cool. Kind of really harden them up and kind of give them that uh, that beast vibe. Okay. 
And of course, I'm just going to have fun and draw and talk to you guys about this as I, as I go along. When you work with a Cintiq for the first time, you feel like you're drawing on plastic, which guess what? You are. And same with the Intuos here in front of me. This surface feels much different than a piece of paper does. It feels like you're drawing on um, a grit, a piece of gritty sandpaper. And you get the hang of it real quick. Um, well, let me say, you'll get the hang of it over time. Um, and once you realize you don't have a choice in the matter what you have laying down on this thing, you're going to draw no matter what. So you just go with whatever function works. And these boards are great. And uh, the newer boards, I think, have a different texture in them. The newer boards, though, because they have a different texture in them, wear down your nibs twice as fast. So you're going to have to buy replacement nibs a lot quicker than if you had an older board. That's what I've heard from a lot of people who have reviewed the newer, um, the newer professional models. So I'm just doing my thing here, coming up with a concept, start drawing in some kind of um, structure on this top of the head here, just so we can get some basic flow. I'm going to give him some hair, just kind of do my hair. I have almost no hair, and that's by choice, thankfully. Maybe work on a little kind of fun beard for him. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to actually ink this guy in front of you guys because one of the things that I know you guys are struggling with if you're a cartoonist is that you are having a really hard time inking. And as I've showed you, speed is key. But how do you use that in a drawing like this? Well, we're about to look into that here in just a second. Once I get done with my final phase of sketching and I've decided I like what I got, then I'll go in and I'll make some final adjustments to it and you'll start seeing me do some inking which is really going to help. I think it'll really help you out. Okay. Um, I actually, for a long time, I taught students at Sam Flax, the art store in here in Orlando. They've gone under new management and I haven't communicated with them since that time. So I am, I would teach them by having them download puzzles from the internet, like uh, mazes. And I would tell them to draw straight lines through the maze on their digital tablet and it really challenged them. So at first I would give them a square maze to work through. So they would draw lines in a square pattern through it and I would say don't just slowly draw that line. I want to see crisp clean lines all through it. So as you're going I want click, 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 click really fast lines. That way when you're going through that maze I want to see this nice pattern. It looks like I'm making a swastika. Nope, definitely not. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, so, <laughs> trust me, no swastikas here. Here's a nice Christian croc. croc. <laughs> nice Christian cross. There we go. Um, but nice crisp lines all the way through it. And then, when they thought they had it and they thought they were pleasing me to death, then I'd give them this. A circle with a maze all the way through it. And I'd say, okay, now I want to see you do the exact same thing, but in a circular pattern. So then they were doing this number all through it and having to decide, all right, how do I make my lines still look smooth through a turn? And it was really tricky for them, And but it was a great study. So if you're really trying to learn, go and find yourself some, some uh, mazes online and take them into your drawing uh, software, whether it's Photoshop or whether it's any software you're using, and just try and draw it out in that sense and see what you get. And it's great learning experience. You'll figure it out. Also, do what I was doing earlier. Do practices from point A to point B at different sizes, different lengths, and just try and learn to get from point A to point B so you can just learn how to communicate with your board better, okay? And you'll learn that it's a lot easier to go from point A to point B if it's smaller in comparison to a humongous line that spans across the whole screen. You're not going to make it or it's going to get really weird. So try and save yourself from, from the trouble by working in tighter areas. And that's one of the beautiful things about zooming in. So this, this, this is a lot harder than this, this, that. Okay? And the trick that I would suggest as you're going through this is to understand that if you overdo it, you can easily go in and erase the excess. Okay? So you will lose nothing by overlapping over this and then just erasing the excess. You'll see me work on that a little bit here. And like I said, the most important thing that you're going to learn is your undo button. If you have to keep going up into your edit menu and doing undo, 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 you're wasting a whole bunch of time. 
So do yourself a favor by either programming a button on here with Alt Control Delete if you're working in Photoshop, or uh, well, excuse me, Alt Control Z, not Alt Control Delete. That'll do a whole different thing. Um, uh, Control Alt Z to undo. That would be the best way to go. Okay. I feel like we got a good structure for this guy. Let's go ahead and zoom in and start really working on him. So I'm going to hit Z, and I'm going to go ahead and click a couple times to zoom in. I got a pretty good idea. I'm going to hit R. Well, I can't do it on this computer, sadly. R is usually my rotate, and that's a very important function if you're drawing on a tablet like this. Because drawing lines, you have to work with the flow that works best for your hand. So your hand might be able to do a good swish from one direction to the other, but not the opposite direction. You need to look at where your hand feels most comfortable as you're drawing on the board, and you need to work with your computer to communicate with that. I'm not going to be able to here, so you guys are going to get to see a unique situation. That's usually because I think there's something called a GPU engine or something like that. That will freeze up and just not allow you to do it. Let me see if I have any settings on that real quick. <clears throat> Edit, Preferences, General. Okay, so here's this. Let's see if there's any rotating functions in here. Uh, I know there is somewhere, and I'm wasting time by doing this. Uh, we're already at 26 minutes. I should be speeding up. But we're going to take a look here real quick just to see if I can find anything. Um, generalized. Um, auto update, beep when done, rasterize, zoom, history, all that jazz, interface, image previews, selections, camera raws, uh, performance. All right, usually, here it is. G graphics processor settings, detect detected graphics processor, no GPU options available with Photoshop standard. So sadly, in this case, I can't use it. I would select that, and it would allow me to rotate. That might be because of my computer. That might be because of just um, this program will freeze up. I know when I use my Cintiq on this computer, I can rotate. But um, for some reason, it's not communicating with it now. And that does happen a lot. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a darker tone now. I'm trying to grab it. <laughs> my cursor is freaking out because it probably jumped over to my other screen. Hang on a sec. Turn my Cintiq back on really quick. I need to jump over to my other screen, so I'm going to hit my screen jump button so that my mouse will go over to my other screen. I'm going to grab and drag it over here. There you go. And then I'll use this and I'll pull it back over make sure that my mouse is not still going over to the other screen. Perfect. Turn that off because I don't want its functions to overtake these functions. I'm going to go ahead and select black. All right, now, one other thing that you're going to learn as you're drawing with hard, crisp lines, which I'm going to pull this out. This is the pressure-sensitive brush. As you learn to work with this, you learn to keep your brush size smaller so that that way your thick-to-thin lines actually go thinner at the ends instead of staying blunt at the front. Now, as you work with this more, you might start to see that there are, it just feels really jittery, and you're wondering, why does this feel so jittery? Let me add an extra layer to my panel here real quick. Okay, so I drew this on the background. I'm going to make a new layer. There we go. And then what I'm also going to grab out of my panels from the side is I'm going to my grab my brush panels. All right, so if you feel like you're getting a lot of jitter as you're drawing, and right now you can't see that because we're working up close and personal. It looks kind of digitized. Let me go ahead and adjust that, and then I'll show you this real quick. What I'm going to do to uh, fix that digitization is we're going to make this panel bigger, okay? So we can start by re redoing the background. Let me go ahead and select this uh, layers panel. Unlock the background by double-clicking and hitting OK. Now I can adjust it as I see fit, so I'm going to make him a little bigger. There we go. We'll hit enter to make that a uh, full change. Image size, let's go ahead and bump this up to 3,000 pixels. That's going to make it give us a lot more working room as we zoom in. I'll go ahead and jump back over to this layer, and that's the one that we're going to draw on. Now if I go in, these lines will look a lot crisper. Actually, they'll look more blurred, but they won't. you won't see as many pixels. And that's because we've made the image bigger. I would not suggest doing this on a regular basis, okay? Um, as you can see, I hit R to try and rotate. Could not complete because the OpenGL enab enabled document windows. So um, the only way to do that would be to reset Photoshop to make that work in this case. So like I said, I'm going to be drawing without it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, quick 
quick moves. All right, and if you make a mistake, Control Alt Z is going to bring you back around. Okay, that'll work. Just got to learn to work with the board. You make you make decisions, and tell your board what you need them to do. Okay. All right, and I want to keep that pressure sensitivity in here as much as possible. So if I don't feel like I'm getting that, I'll make my brush size just a bit smaller, and that should pick it up. And like I said, learn to work your lines quickly, okay? So draw them fast, and if you need to, erase. Either erase or undo and redraw them. That's what I prefer to do. I'll usually undo and redraw. Oops, just overly zoomed in. And now I hit a whole bunch of other commands. <laughs> so zooming out, control out Z to get rid of that one little dot. There we go. And we're back in business. Doesn't feel right still. Closer. Oh. Hit B for my brush. Undo. Uh, that looks a little better. Let me fill that in here. And I keep it in functions. I apologize, guys. Now I'm typing in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not seeing some of the stuff going on because it's outside my window. But um, uh, sometimes I'm, I admit I'm used to my Mac at work. There we go. Okay, there we are. I'm a PC guy, but I work with Mac at work. So let me zoom in here. I'm going to make a slightly bigger um, size brush now by making it bigger with my... Um, brackets and I'm gonna go ahead and draw this line I don't feel like I'm getting a lot of pressure out of this so let's take a look at some of the functions that I might be having an issue with let me see if I can pull up my um, panel for my uh, pen settings my Wacom tablet settings I say Wacom other people say Wacom I think Wacom is correct but I say Wacom because I'm a cheater and let me go over here and grab this and pull it over okay so let's take a look. Right now we're actually kind of firm apparently on this. Well, actually, that's my Cintiq settings. My, ah, look at this, my Intuos 5 settings are much lower. So I'm going to adjust the firmness to make it a little bit harder. That's going to make a big difference. Okay, so now I'm going to have to push down a lot harder to get that real, there we go, that real good line. And like I said, draw fast, okay? If I take my time on this ear and I make my way around... This, you can see tons of stupid little improper lines here that are just screwing it all up, okay? So let's go ahead and undo. Oh, my pen's messing up on me again. There we go, all fixed. So what you gotta do is you gotta think fast as you draw, make quick gestures, quick gestures. My pen is still wigging out on me here, I'm sorry guys. Z, zoom out, there we go, grab this again, make my brush a little smaller, and you can also, if you want, you can also scrape in your, your uh, tones, scrape in your lines, so maybe that's not thick enough, you can draw it in and fill it in, that's fine too. You learn your technique and you go with it, that's the big deal. But, if you want proper quality lines, do them fast. Okay? And it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of repetition, but that's the beauty of digital. You can always, always, always undo. Okay? So, you see here I'm having a hard time trying to get the nose that I'm wanting. So, what I can do instead is zoom in which is going to give me a more precise control with my brush and I can get in these lines a little better and I can thicken it up as I see fit. Okay, it's feeling a little better. Now the ability to rotate like I said is very key and it would help me out in a major way right now but it's not doing it because my computer's being stupid in the middle of, a, in the middle of an episode but we, we're still gonna make it work. <clears throat> And like I said, if you overlap too much, just grab your 
eraser and then just erase the excess. You can use a hard eraser, you can use a soft eraser, uh, whatever brush settings you decide to program into it. Undo, I mean uh, zoom out, and you can see we got a fairly clean looking nose so far. If you want even more crisp lines, you zoom in and you just put more time on each individual line and really try to get that focus there we go to really make it crisp <clears throat> and let me tell you this is a very forgiving art style but at the same time you will see every single blemish that you do if you take your time so let me go ahead and move my brush settings out of the way and if I take my time drawing this line, you see here. I'll try to get some pressure sensitivity. And I zoom out, you'll see every little bit of that crease all through there. And it looks gross. Where if I take the time and I zoom in, and I, like I say, I still work quick. That's, that's something you do have to practice. The undo button is key. There we go. And then I zoom out again. That line looks a whole lot more crisp. It looks correct, you know? Feels feels built. So let's go ahead and just keep building away at this. And it's all going to depend on your art style and how you take this stuff further or not. Um, I'm very indecisive of what I'm going to do with this piece and if I'm going to finish it or what I have in mo you know what I have in mind for its final product. The key thing is just to show you guys. Usually, usually most people have the hardest time getting the crisp lines, especially in Photoshop. And that's because Photoshop is a photo editing software. It's not, it wasn't at first designed for the purpose of drawing. Um, thankfully they did a good enough job developing it so that it could become that and more, but that was not its first initial start. Now, because of that, they don't have some of the functionality of other programs. Let's see, zoom out. You know, some other programs that I might like to use. Now, I admit, one thing I do like about Photoshop is its coloring abilities are ridiculous. And I love that it you can use um, several more profiles than you can find in other programs. In certain programs, you'll have multiply or delay. Well, not delay, diffuse or... Um, overlay or colorize or whatever and each one of those plays a vital role in some of your final designs like I said doing this quick 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 strokes if I take my time on each one of those individual hairs not only will it take a long time but it'll look terrible focus on speed focus on speed if you don't like the line redraw it just undo and keep going undraw undo and keep going don't like it still don't like it just try making my brush a little bigger Let's see if I can maybe work on the creasing a little bit coming out of the eye. Whoops, I did a color selection. I'm going to hold down Alt, select the black, and I'm back in business. Doesn't look right. I'll try from the other direction, swooping upward. Usually I can get better lines going upward. And to do the same thing with this line, I would rotate the whole canvas and do it again. Since I can't do that, I'm going to attempt draw down okay I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna do that again just like that and then obviously I don't want that line there so I'll go ahead and do E for eraser and I'll just clean up my mess okay that's fine it doesn't look terrible maybe I'll round this out a little bit more Oop. undo undo just trying to tell you what commands I'm hitting as I'm doing this I'm going to make my brush bigger because I really want to define this cheek. Oh, that looks terrible. Looks terrible. Still terrible. Let's try going upwards a little better. 
terrible. I'll try a slow line. Maybe I can clean it up with a couple brushes through it, a couple scrapings. Now another thing that you can do is draw the line and then fill it out and then if there's something that you don't like about the line like maybe I put too much in the cheek up here or something in this area get my eraser change the eraser so that it uh, has a different oh no, sorry that's not the eraser there we go I can change the brush so it's not so feathered so I'm literally um, erasing now with the same brush that I used to draw. And you can see that I can literally just draw out the line and clean it up. If that's something I choose to do. I would say that it still makes the line look a little jittery because you're having to make assessments. And one of the important things that you can do, once again, is remember speed is key. So lots of quick, jutty movements if you want to make this look right. Big cheekbone. Alright, let's go ahead and start working on the chin. Okay, right here I'd be rotating the screen uh, 90 degrees in another direction to get the chin mark. If I want to, I could go like this and do a really crazy swoop. Decide on where I want the chin to be and draw another one. And then we'll come back up here like this. Uh, maybe a little higher. Mm, closer. There we go. And then maybe right here we'll come back around. It's a little too sharp. Maybe I'll draw it back out. Speed is key. Keep up your speed. Just keep undoing. Alt Control Z. <laughs> Do too many times your computer uh, your keyboard breaks, just buy another one. No big deal. Alt Control Z is an artist's best friend. Too much. Let me see if I can get some feeling in this by going the other direction first, up the cheekbone. Nope, oh, looks terrible. Still looks pretty bad. Okay, clean it up a little. And then now I'm going to come down with this to here. Okay, so obviously now i got to clean up all these lines. They look like junk. This chin isn't coming back far enough in my mind. So let me go ahead and see if I can bring this up to compensate. And see how that looks. That might be too much. Now I'm just going to fill it up with a lot of black. Now I'm going to grab my eraser. And let's see what happens if we clean up with the eraser. Okay. Let's clean up this line and try and make it look more connected. There we go. Same thing here, just clean up on the bottom, right here. Seeing a couple little black dots right there. Let's try and make this chin look a little bit more cohesive by removing some of that bend. Okay, and right here we're going to cut it down so it's really defined. There we go. I'm seeing something, so I'm going to hit B and fill in this white. Okay, zoom out and see how it looks. Lots of zooming in and out, so it's going to be key that you learn your Z command. That's going to be a big plus for you. Alright, let's go ahead and clean up this side. My my tools that I use all the time and I know the key commands for are my brush, my eraser, and my zoom tool. My um, eyedropper, my control, which selects key elements that I choose, my shift, which selects everything in a row from my layers panel, or uh, just uh, let me think. I'm trying to think about what other functions I use. Those are the key functions that I really go for. You can draw, you can erase lines down to a finite tip, but it takes a little bit of practice, and like I said, lots and lots of just digging. Just work your way out of it and feel 
feel how you're cutting into those lines. Think of the negative space that you're creating and is that going to look any good? There we go. Let's zoom out. No wonder I keep hitting my Windows key. <laughs> there we go. So that looks a little better. Let's go ahead and uh, keep building off on uh, this line here. Okay, and falling down and cutting back. Might be a little too thick for this part of the face, so I can slim it up just with less pressure in my pen. Or if I need to, I can make the pen smaller. Let's go ahead and see if we can kind of define this chin area a bit more. It disappeared. I just zoomed in so close. <laughs> that does happen. The computer does freak out from time to time. So anyway, you can see that the lines look really crisp, and that's because we're going as quickly as we can to fill them out. It makes such a big difference. Um, let's go ahead and build up the ear now. Speed is key. Speed is key. And if not speed, then quality in line after the fact. You get your best quality with speed and practice. But if you can't do it right off the bat, use your eraser, clean up your mess. So I'm just shaping that line to what I kind of inspired it to become, what I had in mind for it first. So if you have to draw things slow, I wouldn't suggest it, but if you have to draw things slow, like I'm doing here, a little bit too slow. Everything here I would be doing hard fast lines. I'm naturally wanting to put quick speed in my lines. On, on the ends, when I'm doing a slow line, I want to quickly pull out of it to get the quickest impact on the final edge of that line. So that's something that I've just trained myself to do so let me fill in the black here to kind of just give this some shadow. Just learn what moves on the pad are doing on the screen. As your hand moves and you feel yourself moving around, how is that affecting things on the screen? You feel a difference? Okay. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and clean up my mess now. So, E for eraser. And I'm just going to, let me move this back in the middle of the screen. Sorry, I get focused on the drawing, and <laughs> I forget to center it in the middle of the recording screen. So, I think it's kind of fun when you get the eraser out to shape the, uh, the lines that you created because it gives you the opportunity to create something that you weren't really planning on creating in the first place. It's one of the things I like doing with eyebrows is I actually enjoy drawing a thick black eyebrow and then digging it out with the white. Excavating, if you will. Well, as I keep drawing here, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the podcast. Really excited about the Artisan Central podcast. Um, it has replaced the Tim Michael Arts podcast, which I'm totally okay with. Um, the Tim Michael podcast, actually, is what I called it. Um, and I have new co-hosts that work on the show with me, and it is a weekly show. Uh, we, we try to have four shows a week, um, but sometimes the memory that we have on Podbean is a little too... Is a little too it's not enough to actually put up... Um, four complete podcasts. So we need some supporters to help us do that. You can take a look at our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Artisan Central Podcast. I would like you to listen to it, though, before you consider supporting us. I'd appreciate that because I want to make sure that you understand that uh, we, are, we are sponsored by people like you or we are supported by people like you, but we make it for you guys, and we have a lot of fun doing it. We have a lot to learn. I've worked in radio for a little while, so I have some experience. And all of my guys have worked in facets of um, TV and radio, and but we still all have a lot to learn. At the end of the day, 
we're just we're just guys and we're just having fun like everybody else so when it comes down to it we need your help and we hope that you would consider it if you have a business and you want to, and you want to put some uh, feelers out for your business uh, you can do that by going to our website artisancentralpodcast.podbean.com and there's an area there called sponsor uh, sponsor the show and if you go in there uh, you'll see that you can sponsor a segment where we'll read your script on the air any script that you have even down to saying hello to your grandmother uh, as long as it's clean and uh, we'll read that on the air for five bucks so sponsor a segment sponsor a whole show um, if you want to sponsor a whole show I'll get in touch with you and we'll communicate further about how to kind of help you out a little bit okay but you guys are going to be seeing uh, new weekly podcasts right here on YouTube and of course um, we strongly advise that you look them up online on uh, on iTunes or on RSS feeds and uh, make sure that you leave comments and let people know what you think especially in iTunes because we get our we get reviews there uh, we get ratings there and that puts us higher on the podcast ratings okay so thank you very much for doing that but uh, we uploaded our first episode today uh, we have done three episodes so far uh, you will be seeing new episodes publishing again soon uh, we have Topher uh, one of our one of our main editors working hard on uh, making episode um, two uh, usable on YouTube and uh, three is going to be one that I'm going to be putting it up uh, very soon. You can listen to all of these right now. They're all up on our Patreon, uh, excuse me, on our podcast page um, or on iTunes, but they're not up here on YouTube yet. They will be soon. So as you can see, I'm kind of shaping out the eyebrows and I'm making them really thick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out uh, my design into them and that way you can kind of get a feel of how I do that. So, you know, usually pirates will have a separation of eyebrow because they got beat up real bad or something. Um, and then I can start digging into this and just digging out the negative space to kind of create uh, the effect that I want to have. It's a lot of fun to do this, and it feels very tribal. It feels very uh, separated and disjointed, and it's kind of cool. No, but I feel bad because we're putting up this really cool audio podcast, but you guys haven't seen a video out of me for a while, so this is inspiring me to make this video. And since I've had so many comments on how to work with these kinds of boards, I thought this would be a lot of fun. As you can see, it's kind of pulled out a really cool design over his eyebrow that I think looks pretty sweet. So let me go ahead and draw in this. And I'm going to leave it a little jaggedy on purpose because it's a scar. So jaggedy is OK. So if I wanted to, I could actually take my time on it because I might want that jagged look in the final piece. Keep hitting that Windows key. OK. Let's go ahead and start working on the outside of the head. Working off of here, and we'll come up. Whoops. You can see if I go slow and I'm drawing this head out, see how jagged that line looks? But if I'm willing to try and speed through it, understanding that it's not going to be perfect, but I can clean it up after the fact, that's the key part. So I'm just quickly jutting out lines. And based on these lines that I'm jutting out, I will make decisions on what I want to do. So that one looks really good. That one looks really clean. And if I draw a lot of lines, I can choose the ones that I want to keep and then the ones that I want to get rid of, and I can erase them with my eraser. So all these here don't feel right, so obviously I can get rid of them. And I can kind of just build where I want that line to go. This feels like it's coming out too far, so I'll erase back a little bit. And let's go ahead and start again. And working off this point, like I said, lots of jetty lines are okay, just so you think you can clean them up properly in the end.
So lots more jetty lines just to clean up the line. And, and what you can do is you can refine it. So you can start by doing quick jetty lines just in general. And then as you get to your goal, then you can zoom in. Not too much because you want to see the entirety of the line. And I'm, I'm going to use my pen to kind of just fill out some of these lines a little bit. And just kind of build them up, give them some bulk. And then, if need be, which this definitely is need be, <laughs> I'm going to just go back and clean up these edges. And because I'm zoomed in, I'm putting more focus on it. I just want to be careful that I'm not damaging the line. I, I want to make it look like it's a single stroke, which is impossible, but I can get pretty close. <clears throat> I mean, if you are a knowledgeable artist of digital stuff, you can look at a line and you can know when that is drawn with one stroke or it was drawn with multiple strokes. And you can see I'm doing lots of jetty moves. If you look at my hand, you'll see it's lots of chunk, 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 and just building up lines and removing lines. And depending on how big you're going to print this or what you're going to use it for, you can get away with having some jetty lines. So it looks good, but you can agree that there are some still some jetty lines all over this thing. And there's other ways that you can do it. You could vector it. You could, there's lots of different right ways, but you can see that we got a good start going on here. We're at 57 minutes, so I'll go ahead and keep drawing for about three minutes, and then we'll call it a day. Please leave your questions in the comments below. Would love to answer them. Feel free to ask whatever. And uh, if I can make a YouTube video, I will do my best. And uh, just thank you for so much for being patient with me. Uh, we've been really focusing on the podcast. And uh, because we've been putting that much focus on it, um, we hope to bring you a better product as we get better at it. And it's, it's finally a weekly show again, which is a lot of fun for me uh, to have a weekly show again to make the time. And the thing that really helps me is if I'm doing it by myself, I give up because it's just so much work. But I'm working with a great team and everyone's helping me out and they all come up with these great ideas and I get to listen to them and get to I get to run the show but at the same time I get the the honor of having such a great team working with me it's a blast <clears throat> but that's one of the reasons why we've been so focused because this has been in planning stages for a little bit uh, to do the podcast and we're finally moving forward on it and uh, we finally started it on kind of on a whim you know we were really focusing and I'm like you know what let's just do this I'm going to interview someone special and let's just start the show. And that's what we did. And it's been fairly decent. We've had some pretty big squalls. We've we've lost some very important audio, but we're going to make up for it soon. We're going to be doing a re-interview um, with uh, Aaron Blaze again uh, to make up for for about 45 of uh, 45 minutes of content that we've lost. But uh, just so much so much fun. I'm, I love sitting behind my microphone and sitting behind my drawing pad and just talking my head off or you know sitting behind my my radio controls my knobs and doohickeys and just having fun chatting and interviewing and talking with special people and just learning about all the ins and outs of all this stuff you know it is so much fun you gain a lot of inspiration by listening to other people well, guys, we're about done with uh, this podcast. and uh, Sorry, I keep saying podcast. With this uh, episode here on my YouTube channel. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Make sure you take a look at my website, timmichaelarts.com, where you can buy a caricature. And uh, you can also take a look at a lot of the other stuff I got going on there. Take a look at our podcast at artisancentralpodcast at gmail.com. I'll include links in the description to go to iTunes, to go to anywhere to get these downloads so you can listen to the show. Uh, you can also take a look at um, our, oh, there, there's just so much that we got going on with this stuff. Um, but artisancentralpodcast.pondby.com if you want to be a supporter. Or artisancentralpodcast uh, 
excuse me, patreon.com forward slash artist and central podcast if you want to support. Um, and I think that's about it, guys. Go to .com, webcomic.com, take a look at the comic that I do uh, with my new little character, Ajax. And uh, he's a fun little um, website that uh, you'll learn more about as time goes on and as we keep drawing that up. And uh, just very busy with uh, everything, guys, so thank you for your support and uh, the time that you have uh, uh, allowed me to have in your lives. Let me go ahead and put in some beard here real quick, and then I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Um, please hit the like button if you enjoy it. If I uh, have helped you out in any way, shape, or form, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much to all my new subscribers. We're up to 6,700 subscribers at the making of this video. Um, it just hit 6,700 today. Get quite a few subscribers during the day, and it's become quite a normal thing. I remember back in the day when I dreamed of having this many subscribers, and now that I have this many, I don't have much time to work on podcast. I mean, uh, videos, and so it's kind of a shame. So hopefully by putting up the podcasts here, it will guilt me into making sure to keep up with the videos so that you guys are getting content and then bonus content because of the podcast. That's my hope. And uh, guys, if there's anything I can do, like I said, leave comments in the comment box below. Please remember to keep them clean. All mean comments, all um, all critiques that are uh, meanly phrased, everything gets deleted. So make sure that you keep it clean. And if you want to give some advice, feel free. Just make sure that you do it in kindness and not in frustration. And uh, if you do that, we'll make sure that it stays on there so that many people can read it and appreciate it in the final cut. Okay? All right, guys. Well, that's just about going to do it for me. So, like I said, take a look at timmichaelarts.com for purchasing caricatures and some of my old comics. You can go to .com, webcomic.com for my um, .com. Uh, uh, well, actually, you can go to the the uh, Artisan Podcast. Uh, you can also take a look at the, the uh, comic on there. And then um, you can take a look at all the other stuff that I've already talked about. I'll leave that alone. And uh, just thank you so much, guys. Uh, God bless you, and uh, looking forward to hearing more from you guys on what you need from me so that I can get you more videos and uh, show you a little bit more about uh, how to get crisp lines in Photoshop and in other programs, drawing on this or drawing on the Cintiq, whatever I can help you guys out with. So um, thank you very much for your request on wanting to learn about this. I hope it helps draw and uh, send it over to our Facebook so I can take a look and see what you guys are up to, okay? Look, uh, look up uh, Tim Michael Arts on Facebook and uh, send me over your stuff that you're working on, okay? All right, God bless you guys. I'll see you next time. I'm so tired.